God turned it completely around. Thank you, and, uh, Jesus. We're as thankful Thank you, God. for the Tom White House said as we have sense enough to be. Thank you, God. Praise God. So Thank grateful Jesus. for Thank what you. the Lord's done. Amen. It may not be as fast a, a doing as you wanted it, but it sure wasn't as slow as it could have been. Praise God. I thank the Lord for that. Glad you're here. Glad you're in church this morning. Thank you, I'm going to read in Philippians 4, 1 Timothy 6, and Hebrews 13. All pretty well right there close to one another in the New Testament. I don't even have them all marked myself, so you'll have time to get them. I don't have enough little ribbons here. And if I do, if I have enough ribbons, I get them cluttered up and miss them. So. But I just want to get about one verse in each one of these spots. Philippians 4 and verse number 11 said, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned. Have you ever learned anything? For I have learned. In whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse number 6. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Do you see a reoccurrence of words in those three places there? Be content. Contentment. I want to preach to you this morning, the Lord help me, on dealing with discontentment. Philippians 4 and 11 said, and again he's talking about having, having money and, and you know having, having things provided for you. And, uh, and he said, not that I speak in respect of want, but I've learned something, Paul said to that church. I've learned something. And what I've learned is that whatever state I'm in, that doesn't mean Arkansas, Missouri, California, whatsoever state or condition or my lot in life, whatsoever state I'm in, therewith or with that state, I'll be content in that state. Wherever I'm at, that I'm, that I'm, that I'm located, whatever my geographic location is, Whatever my emotional location is, whatever my spiritual location is, wherever God's put me at, I'm going to be content there. The verse speaks much. There's a lot in it. It's a verse I hated as a child. All three of these verses I hated as a child. When I asked for things and my mother said, I've learned what's ever state I'm in to be content. Or they said, be content with whatever you have. I want some cookies today. Be content with what you have. I want to go out and eat after church. I want to go over to my friend's house. I want to do this. I want to do that. Be content wherever you're at. God made us with contentment. I want this new little truck over here, this remote control truck. Whatever you got, you be content with that. I hated those verses. You did too. Maybe you sit and smile at me this morning, but you hated them too when you was a child. Those are verses that are readily available in a parent's repertoire of things to talk about. They use verses like, whoever God loves, he chastens. And so I love you. That's why I'm fixing to beat you half to death with this stick. <laughs> they use verses like, if you spare the rod, you'll spoil the child. Well, uh, somebody, somebody said one time that I was spoiled. And I thought, not according to the Bible, I ain't. Because my mom and dad sure didn't spare the rod. If that sparing of the rod... It's the only way to spoil a child. There is no chance today that I'm spoiled because I was well accustomed to being acquainted with a rod. All these little verses that my parents used, they learned them. I, they didn't find, I never heard my parents quote things like, Fathers provoke not your children to anger or provoke not your children to wrath. They never quoted anything like that. It was always stuff like be content with what you got. But Paul, three times here, and whoever the Hebrew writer is. They said whatsoever state I'm in. In Philippians I'm going to be content. And then to, to Timothy. To this young man. This young preacher boy that's relying on Paul. Paul writes to him. His first letter. 
from a jail cell, this old mentor, this great man of God, writes to his son in the gospel. And he said, godliness with contentment is great gain. Now, I don't want to have to stop every four or five minutes here and qualify everything I preach. I understand that if you don't have the Holy Ghost, as long as you're content to live without the Holy Ghost, you're never going to get the Holy Ghost. It's not till you become dissatisfied with status quo and realize that I need to move up in God. And, and, and I understand that if, if you're in a church that has no outreach, they don't love the community, they don't want anybody to get saved, you need to be discontent with that. That's not what I'm preaching about. If I need to come back tonight or in another service and follow up a part two with this, I can. But I don't want to qualify all of it. I just want to preach the direction that God has been dealing with me about. We're living in a world, we're living in a society, we're living in a church society of people that are dealing with discontentment. There's a great attitude of discontentment that's loose in our land. People are discontent with the way God made them. That's why there's people this morning that make a living giving people with straight hair perms. They're discontent. They don't want straight hair. People that have permed hair by birth, they come out with kinky hair. There's people that make a living by straightening that hair. They're discontent. I'm not telling you it's right or wrong. I'm telling you folks don't like it. People that are born red-headed want to put blonde highlights in it. People that are blonde want to turn their hair black. People that have black hair want to turn their hair blonde. They don't like the color it is. There's some people I can't keep up with them. Every time I see them, they look different. They got different color. There's, there, there, there's plastic surgeons in the world that are rich today, much, much more wealthy than I am or you are this morning. And they do nose jobs and ear jobs and forehead jobs and, and chin tucks and tummy tucks and all kinds of stuff like that because people don't like the way they are. Amen. Boys, I never heard of this nice boy. <laughs> but boys are discontent with being a boy. Some girls are discontent with being a girl. A preacher friend of mine sent me a message just this week and said that in the public school in the city where he lives, a much larger city than where we are, and I thank God for where we are. I'm content. The more of this nutty goofiness that goes on in our world, the more I like where I'm at. The more content I am of where I live. But a young woman in the public school there said that, uh, that, that they let boys change themselves over to girls and they let girls change themselves over to boys. And so she said that I want to change myself into a cat. I don't want to be a person. I want to be a cat. Can you imagine? I, I, I don't want to just go crazy with name calling, but that's stupid. <laughs> that is no better way to describe That's stupid. That's ridiculous. And so the parents petitioned the school board and they built a litter box in the restroom for this girl to use instead of a commode. And the custodian, boy, you may be discontent with your job. We get some cat identifiers down here. But, but see, they got to clean that litter box out because that girl identifies as a cat. I'm telling you, discontentment will do bad things to you. Discontentment is a disease that seems to be taking over our entire world. People are discontent. Paul said, I've learned to be content with the state that I'm in. Discontentment will lead you to many evils. Discontent with our holiness way of life has led a lot of people out the door. They didn't want to do that anymore. I don't want to live like that. I don't want to live that lifestyle. I don't, I don't want to do that. And, and I want to tell you something this morning. I know people that have been raised up all their life hearing that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. That we really believe that there's no other door. That, that it's not through Muhammad. It's not through Confucius. It's not any other way except Jesus Christ. But discontentment will lead you into deception. There's people that will leave the church and leave the truth of God's Word and they'll end up in deception because they got caught up first with discontentment. Help him, God. Help him, God. 
Being content, that phrase, be content, it's found in your Bible about eight times. 37 times in Scripture we're talked to about being content. Ten times in just the Gospels alone, Jesus warns against last day deception. I want you to know something this morning. If there's anything going on in our cities, in our land, if there's anything that has invaded our church world, it is deception. Yes. People get caught up in deception. It's bad now. Now, 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 if you get deceived, if you get deceived by Jim Jones, somebody like that, down there in Guyana, killed all the people that cyanide Kool-Aid, if you get caught up in something like that, you might have a chance to get out if somebody proved to you that that guy's a fraud. But, but the problem with deception is when it comes down to being deceived their own selves, that it wasn't anybody else that done it. It wasn't the devil that done it. The Bible said they have deceived themselves. Self-deception is a disaster. Because everybody's right in their own eyes. Everybody knows more about everything else than you do. Folks, is content to be discontent. Yes. Stay with me this morning. Help him, God. Discontentment has taken people away. I watch people get discontent. They're discontent with the way they have church. I don't want anybody to holler. I don't want anybody to run. I don't want anybody to get the Holy Ghost. I don't want folks to cry. I, I know people that I've preached with and I've worshipped with that have been led astray into deception. They got discontent with what we have. They got discontent with who we were. And next thing you know, they don't believe in speaking in tongues. They don't believe in raising their hands. They don't believe in praying at an altar. They don't have an altar in the church house for anybody to go to. They quit believing in divine healing. They've done away with the bottle of oil. They've done away with prayer clothes. They got discontent. And discontentment led them into deception. I'm telling you something this morning. Don't get content to be discontent. Don't get discontent with church. Don't get discontent with the Bible. I don't need a Koran to read. I don't need a Book of Mormon to read. I'm having a hard enough time reading this Bible and understanding it and keeping myself in line with it. I don't need everything else to read. When you get discontent with the Word of God, you're going to wind up in deception if you're not very careful. Discontentment with the home. Leads many people into divorce. Donnie and Diane been married over 40 years. They were just nearly childhood sweethearts. He told me they're in the hospital that day when we got down there to uh, the Dallas area, that big hospital. And then I didn't have any idea until later that I, we rode the elevator up across the parking lot with that neurosurgeon, the, the main guy, the head friend down there. I didn't know it. We rode the elevator up with him. There we was on that elevator. And he got off. He went the same place I went. And Donnie began to tell me how long I mean, I'm going to tell you something. And if you've been married for 40 years this morning, there's been times discontentment got a hold of you. My dad testified one time on mom and dad, mom's anniversary. And he said, there's been times I looked at her and I thought, man, she's a beautiful angel from heaven. And he said, there's been other times I looked at her and thought, what were you ever thinking to get into this? That's just the way marriage is. There's been ups and there's been downs. And you know why a lot of people never make it? You know why young families people Help get married God. and six months later they fell out of love? You know why young women won't keep a marriage vow? They won't be faithful to their husband and they get deceived and the Bible said not to but they decided it's alright. I'll train him in on another one. I don't like his hair. I don't like his dirty socks. I want to tell you something his feet stuck before you married him. And discontentment will land you in the divorce court. Yeah. Discontentment will tear your whole life. Discontentment will ruin your children. Discontentment will ruin you. Amen. Don't be discontent. Help Sister you. Jennifer is a wonderful cook. I walked up to the fellowship meeting the other night and uh, you know I was I just greeting folks, you know, shaking hands. I walked over to some preachers standing over here. As I came around shaking hands, I turned to shake their hand. And Brother Frank Rogers looked me up and down. He said, boy, your wife must really be a good cook. You're fatter every time I see you. I didn't say nothing about his big nose and big ears. And I didn't say nothing about how ugly Brother Frank was. 
I've lost 45 pounds since he saw me last. I didn't mention that. I just, I, I kind of like Brother Randy Webb. Humility and self-control just grabbed me with both hands. And I didn't say anything. She's a great cook. Have I liked everything she ever put on the table? No. Has every dessert she tried been good? No. Has every pan of biscuits been baked perfect? No. Has every pan of hot rolls risen perfectly? No. But did I kick her to the curb? No. Does her hair look good every time she fixes it? No. Does her times it looks fuzzy? Yes. Do I like every dress she has? No. But I'm telling you what I said I do and I have and I will and I am yes. and I plan on keeping with it. If you let discontentment get a hold of you, you'll be a church hopper, a relationship hopper. People get discontent. And in an age of technology, with the mediums of social media, there are many families this morning that have been destroyed because somebody in the home got drunken on discontentment. Yes. It wasn't alcohol that done it. It's just the fact that I don't like you being a size 10 instead of a size 6. But I'm going to tell you something this morning. Every man that gripes at his wife about her weight, I'm just going to preach like I feel. I've only got ministers got company this morning. I'm just going to preach like I feel. And, and folks get upset and say, well, she shouldn't be that big. She let herself go. i tell you what. You run two or three kids through your system. Amen. Have two or three babies and see how it affects you. Amen. You don't look like a high school quarterback at 40 years old. Your hair isn't perfect. You got a pot gut. Amen. But they're gripe with their wife. You know why? It's because they're so drunk on pornography. And they've been That's keeping their nose in the field of the world. And they're going to measure their wife by some plastic surgery monster that Hollywood burnt out. And that discontentment will lead you to disaster. Praise God. Some women need a job. Some women need to get off Facebook. Christians, don't you listen to me. Woo, I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> Christian women don't have a man crush Monday. Christian women don't have a favorite Hollywood man star. Are you hear me? Christian women don't have their ex-boyfriend's number. Christian women won't keep going back to the exes. Christian men won't participate in Woman Crush Wednesdays. I don't even know if that is such a thing, but I'm probably not too far off. <laughs> Hallelujah. Christian people, Christian men measure their wife by some million dollar plastic surgery monster that's nothing but a bunch of silicone and Botox and a bunch of amen, feces and ground up babies in makeup smeared all over her face. Amen. Now uh, listen to me this morning. I'm going to tell you. Amen. You want to stay with your wife? You better keep your nose out of Hollywood. Amen. Women that want to measure their hard work and husband comes in covered in sawdust from a sawmill and stinking like sweat. And you want to measure him with some limp-wristed lily. Amen. That never done a day of honest work in his life. It ain't no wonder why. He's got the homes in disorder. Amen. Discontentment with holiness will lead you to this. I understand there's been some angels that hitched their buggy up to some stinking low life that wouldn't make a living. Batted them and the kids around all the time. Everybody that's ever been through a divorce is not trash. No. Some folks just married out of God's will. If you marry a child of the devil, don't expect anything less than trouble with your father-in-law. Amen. Did you hear me? If you marry the devil's children, you're going to have trouble with your father-in-law. Who is it? It's the, it's the devil. Every divorcee doesn't mean they're the problem. Some folks have their buggy hitched up. I'll tell you what. You go out here and get you one of these white, hey, these white surreys with a little fringe on the top and red velvet cushions. And, and, a, and, a, and a nice rubber tire over the wagon wheel. One of these good looking rigs that run about five, six, seven thousand. And you hook it up to one of them ugly little donkeys that Paul and Debbie's got over yonder. And it ain't going to look right. That's just what it looks like when some of our good church girls uh, marry some sleazy kid out of the world. Uh, or some of our good boys marry some Jezebel. Uh, don't hitch your surrey up to a donkey. Amen. Amen. That's good for Discontentment with your life 
lead you to disaster. Discontentment with your place in life. The Bible says sin, when it is finished. The preacher mentioned that the other day. Yeah. When it's finished. I told Sister Jean the other night, I said there's a process implied in that verse. Sin, when it is finished. Yes. It may not get finished overnight. The first sin may not be the finishing sin. But when you get discontent, and, and I want to tell you something this morning, when you're battling boredom mm -hmm. spiritually, when you're battling boredom with your marriage, when you're battling boredom with your church, when you're battling boredom with your lot in life, you better get a hold of that. My dad, I'd go tell you, you know, I, I, I just didn't say that much. But if I was dumb enough to tell my mom and dad I'm bored, amen, dad said I'm fixing to lay a board on you, amen, we, you wasn't allowed to be bored. I had enough chores to keep me unbored, amen, I didn't have a lot of trouble battling boredom. I'd watch little kids sit down and there's nothing on TV and there's nothing on YouTube and there's nobody to talk to and they chuck their cell phone across the room and they throw the remote, I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored. I'll tell you what the idle mind do. My grandmother said is the devil's yeah. workshop. And then if you get discontent with the church, if you get bored with the church, they will get you a stack of tracks and go knock doors. If you get bored with our testimony service, then you start testifying it down. Yeah. If you get bored with our song service, and then you get a song and come to church and sing it. If you get bored with my preaching, you pray a higher anointing on me. If you get bored with your life, they then till the garden, mow the yard. We need the neighbor's yard. Pick up trash. But don't get discontent. And let the devil take you from discontentment all the way to disaster. Boredom is a seducing spirit. People get bored. I've had folks tell me I'm bored in my relationship. I'm bored with my husband. I'm bored with my wife. A woman come to my office one day where I was working. She was bored with her husband. She didn't like him. He's fat. He's going bald. Sister Karen, she wanted to sit down there in my office and gripe about her husband. Well, how do you be tactful and tell her, babe, you've got some saddlebags for hips too? You know? How do you, how do you look at her and tell her, you don't sure don't look like you did when you was in high school? She's down there gripping about her husband. You know what happened? She started coming down and she'd bring me a drink from Sonic at happy hour. She'd bring me a candy bar to my office. Amen. Finally, one day my wife got a hold of her. Amen. A little while later, I saw her come back and she had been crying. My wife was crying. I said, honey, what'd you do? She said, you remember Loretta Lynn singing, you ain't woman enough to take my man. She said, I sung her a little of that, so to speak. Amen. I'll tell you what it was this morning. You better stay away from people that are bored. If you find a woman this board and you're a man. You better stay away from her. If you find a man that's bored and you're a sister, you better stay away from her. If you find a church member that's bored, you better stay away from her. I'll tell you what the devil will do to you today. He'll get you caught up in boredom and all drunk and all discontentment. And the next thing you know, you're going to be a prayer request. Man, is ever a lot in life good? No. Man, you know how come people are church hoppers? You know how come folks can't go to church and stay with it? They get discontent. You know why? It ain't just church people. No. You know why some churches can't keep a pastor? It didn't cause the church is a troubled church. It's cause that preacher's got the hot foot. And every time there's a new job opening, every time there's a new portable building plant that needs a manager, he's down the road. Every time there's more money to be made somewhere, hey, they end up getting him a bunch more money by usury. Hey, and my God, you might well just help me preach this morning. I tell you, we got preachers more busy chasing the, 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 the yes. dollar than they are chasing the sheep. Can't stay put. Some evangelists can't stay on the field. They're always discontent. Yes. Quit trying to swoon people out of the other man's church. Amen. 
Pray through it. Let conviction fall on your community. Get a burden Amen. for the lost. And quit stealing babies out of the neighbor's nursery. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You know why we got church hoppers? Relationship hoppers? Job quitters? All these people run around with a new revelation. Amen. Say, what, 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 what is it? Everybody gets a new revelation. Ken, Kenneth Hagin, Kenneth Copeland, Amen. Jimmy Swagger, Benny Hinn. And with all that many people that had a platform back then. And now everybody's got a podcast. Everybody's got a show. Everybody's got a blog or a vlog. I tell you, I don't even want a blog. It sounds gross to me. I don't tell you, cough up when you got a sinus infection. I don't want a blog. I don't want a podcast. Amen. You better be careful what you get cooked hooked up with. You get discontent and you go to listen to everything the world's got to offer. Yes. And the next thing you know, you're going to have a disaster on your hands. Yes. People, my dad got saved. Every time he heard about a, 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 a job, paid a little more money, he's down the road. They got one more vacation day. There he went. They're going to give you one more dollar of insurance coverage. There he goes. Dad said, I can't even count how many jobs I had. That first year or two, I was saved finally one night at church in the vestibule. Wise old brother Edwards, his pastor, put it. He said, Brother Edwards, pray for me. I'm getting ready to go to get this new job down here. And Brother Edwards put his heart around him, Sister Gail. And he said, Brother Bob, I want to give you some advice. He said, You ain't ever going to get all the squirrels in the same tree. <laughs> Dad finally got on the post office and he stuck it out for 30 some years, retired. There's a lot of employers wish they had some employees that wasn't so discontent. Yes. There's a lot of women that are single mothers wish their husband hadn't been so discontent. There's a lot of dads that are raising children yes. wishing their wife would have been content. Amen. There's a lot of pastors preaching the empty pews and he wishes his church people would have been content. There's a lot of church people this morning across America, believe it or not, they're having church today without a preacher. Yes. And they wish their pastor would have been content. Yes. Discontentment will never do you any favors spiritually, mm -mm. emotionally, physically. I need to say this, and I, I need to close. My goodness, I just, uh, won't you all come back sometime? <laughs> it ain't always like this. I'll tell you what. Somebody told me, you ain't got to be fat to be homeless, Brother Justin. I got no sense to know that. I'm not dumb. No, you don't have to be fat to be a Christian. But I asked the man, I said, you're supposed to be a homeless preacher. What business have you got sweating it up with a bunch of women in leotards at the local gym? It's because you want a six-pack instead of a 12-pack. And you're down there with everybody else's wives. While well, all those men at work, I said, yeah, you don't, we don't believe in that. We preach against mixed bathing. I said, we don't go to the public swimming pool. Why? I ain't got no business down there swimming with a bunch of women in their underwear. And you don't either. Yeah. We preach against that. He said, well, I don't have to be fat like you. I said, you ain't got to be fat like me. But I asked him, I said, is there a bunch of women in there wearing things that they, most women don't even wear for underwear? He said, sure. I said, buddy, I'm telling you what, that ain't no place for you to be. You know what happened? It wasn't very long ago, him and one of them women was hooked up, and his wife was crying in the divorce court, trying to figure out who's going to raise the babies, because he got discontent. I tell you what, if you get discontent, go on and die it.
Amen. Yes. You be content with where you're at, your relationship. You say, my wife don't treat me right. My husband won't treat me right. Well, maybe you ain't treating him right. That's true. You brothers, are you loving your wives like Christ loved the church? Well, she's got to be in submission to me. She's got to be obedient. The Bible said so. She can't back on me. She can't do this. She can't do that. The Bible also said for you to love her like Christ loved the church. Are you doing that? Amen. Babe, would you care to pot this plan for me? No, I ain't pot that plan. I work all day. I put my feet up. You get quit bad for me. Put me in such an old man. <laughs> How do you care to carry the trash out? I've been here on my feet all day working. Took a meal down here so and so that had surgery, and I'm running a little behind. We already had supper made when I got home. Bless God. Them women down there at work, they're making eyes at me. You don't have supper made when I get home. I'll catch me another woman. I heard an electrician one day mouthed off to his wife at a pizza buffet. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm going to trade you in for one of them cute young blondes that's wired 220. And she said, why? You're just wired 110. She said, you got a short. <laughs> <laughs> you hear me? I'm telling you what. There's a lot of people this morning needed to hear this message. And their home wouldn't have been in the shape it's in. There's a lot of little boys and girls tonight going to cry. Because they want to spend the weekend with mama or daddy or whatever the case was. But discontentment tore up the happy home. Amen. There's a lot of churches this morning that's going to close the service in just a few minutes without ever having heard a message. Because the preacher was too busy trying to get rich. If you want to get rich, ministry, they don't ask all those preachers to come to the job fair at public school. <laughs> There's not an overload of young children volunteering for ministry. Most people are like Jonah. They're running from it. The ministry was never meant to be a million dollar enterprise full of entrepreneurs. The ministry was never meant to have a bunch of rich men with triple digit income lording over a congregation and beating them up twice a week with verbal abuse from a pulpit. It was meant to be a place where men would serve and be shepherds to sheep. And love unconditionally. I told a preacher just last night, he said, the ministry hurts. I said, yeah, it does. Because when you got a big heart, you can have a big hurt. Yes. But it's worth it. Yes. I felt like preaching to you this morning. I ain't trying to be mean. But I felt like preaching to you. You better watch out for discontentment. Because there's a discontentment ever bites you. Yes. It'll take you to disaster for it's done. Yes. There's a whole lot of examples I could give. A lot of names that couldn't be called. Demas, he got discontent. Yeah. He decided he loved the world instead of the gospel. And we have that sad little verse, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. What about the might have been in Judas's life? What about the might have been with a lot of others? Discontentment. Caught him. Amen. Praise God. Let's stand this morning. Maybe you don't feel like this message is relevant. Maybe you don't feel like you needed it. Maybe you didn't. I want you to know something this morning. Discontentment is a serious problem. Our world is full of it. You know why our politicians can't get together on important things like fixing roads and finding a cure for cancer and Alzheimer's? Because they're too busy trying to decide whether or not to fund these people that are discontent. They want us to accept them for who they are when they didn't accept themselves for who they were. You hear me? You know why the Democrats and Republicans can't get along and get some platforms together that will help America out? Because we're too busy with all this discontentment going on. And it causes war in Washington. It causes war in your house. It causes war in your heart. You want a better marriage? Learn what Paul learned. Be content. You want a better church? Be content. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Praise God. Let's come pray this morning and seek the Lord. I preach my best to you. Maybe it ain't just like we usually preach, but it's what I felt from the Lord. Don't get drunk on this.